So Mass Effect Andromeda is about to drop, and we here at Mass Effect Follower have been lucky enough to have been given early access to the game. We thought that we would use this opportunity to give you guys a list of things that we wish that we'd known or considered before we started the game ourselves. Hopefully this will help you guys as it would have helped us through your adventures in the Helios Cluster. Now before we begin, we want to apologize for the lack of appropriate footage. We really try our best to match the footage with what we're talking about, but with the game coming out so recently, we are not able to get every exact footage that we want to talk about while we show you guys, and we hope that you all understand. Now unless you're playing on the easiest difficulty, you'll often find yourselves in some difficult situations, ones that would likely do a lot better with biotic and tech combos when available to you. While squadmates have both primer and detonator abilities that you may take advantage of, they may not come at the perfect time for you to capitalize on. So it's important that you consider these things while specking your rider, even at the beginning of the game. Now we're not saying to limit yourself too badly. Always be willing to try new abilities that may not necessarily match with your current setup, but having a general idea of what kind of combat skills you'll be going for is extremely helpful. Now that being said, what if you made a mistake? What if it turns out that spending those 20 points into a skill that you've never used wasn't a great idea? Well, as with the previous games, you can pay a fee of credits in the med bay to reset either your points or those of your squadmates. Something that we wish that we'd figured out before we sank three levels worth of skill points in increasing the damage of our tech abilities, all one of them. At least Overload is pretty kick-ass, we just wish we put some more into the other abilities. Be aware though that the cost of resetting your points in this way increases each time you use it, so be careful and use it sparingly. While we're talking about combat, here are a few quick tips. Don't forget your consumables, they are surprisingly powerful and may just be the difference between life or death. In hindsight, a lot of difficult encounters could have been a lot easier with their help. Also, while you're in combat, you can press a button and it will swap the camera's shoulder. This is very helpful as you swap cover and have to shoot from the left versus the right. Now if you've played the original trilogy, and if you're watching us, you probably have, You'll remember the Paragon Renegade dialogue options that the game was famous for. The dialogue options have been split up for Andromeda, so now instead of choosing between Saint or Jerk, you can choose between two scales instead of one, emotional to logical and casual to professional. Maybe it's a bad habit from the trilogy, but we found ourselves choosing an identity for Ryder from the start and forcing ourselves to conform to it. That strategy was probably relevant for games such as Mass Effect 2, where not accumulating enough points in either Renegade or Paragon actually prevented you from resolving certain situations. We're looking at you, Jack and Miranda. But in a new galaxy, things are different. If there is one big thing that we wish we could redo from the start, it's that we wish we tried all of those dialogue options that we ignored because they didn't fit. At the end of the day, the attitudes aren't there to limit your options, they are there so you have an idea of the sentiment behind your choice. Go with what you think is appropriate, especially for your first playthrough. Let the game construct a personality for a writer based around your choices, not the other way around. Now vendors can have great stock, especially if you spend AVP on the commercial perk that allows them to sell rarer goods. And drops in the field can range from decent to amazing. But nothing beats something that you, well, researched and developed on your own. Spending those hundreds of research points and using those crafting materials that you've picked up is practically imperative on the higher difficulties, as enemies become numerous and deadly. The system exists for a reason, so use it as soon as possible. You will really need the advantages that the better guns and armor give you for the mid to late game. For reference, by the time that you've placed your first outpost on EOS, it's probably best to have replaced your starting gear with something better. Trust us, we struggle through a fight with a remnant destroyer with nothing but our trusty M8 Avenger and initiative armor, so you didn't have to. It was not fun. Besides, there's some pretty cool stuff that you can only get through research and development. My remnant armor wearing, Krogan hammer toting rider is way cooler than your boring, fresh off the arc rider. Now there is no shame in lowering the difficulty, really. The game gets really hard, especially on Hardcore and Insanity. If you find yourself struggling, don't be afraid to tone it down a bit. When a fun challenge turns into a frustrating slog of repeating the same encounter a dozen times, you kinda have to weigh your pride against your enjoyment. 
We swear we're not just saying that because it happened to us. We really don't want you guys to not enjoy the game due to having a difficult time. If it really seems too difficult for you, just tone it back a little bit and the game is just as fun. Now don't feel as if you have to do every side quest all in one go. If you focused on it, you could probably pick them up a dozen at a time, each pointing you all around the cluster. Don't feel any rush to finish them all at once. We haven't come across any time sensitive side quests yet, and we've spent over 30 hours in the game, so don't worry about some of those early side quests that you might not be able to finish. And plus, remember, side quests are meant to be finished at your leisure. If you find yourself on the same planet as that quest, sure, go ahead and do it. But you'll tend to find a lot of quests even into the late game that send you back to places that you've been before. And there's nothing worse than traveling all the way back to the Nexus to do one mission before getting another one that requires you to go all the way back. Now all of the planets in the game evolve over time, especially once you've been there to give them that special Pathfinder touch. Be sure to check in sometime after placing that outpost. You might just find new areas, people, and quests to complete. Plopping down an outpost and hitting 100% viability might feel like it's the end of your interaction with that world, but we can assure you that is not the case. So far, it seems to us that one fourth or one fifth of every world's content only becomes available after having completed the planet. Now those pesky Sudoku or remnant puzzles. One moment you're shooting your way through hordes of ancient robots and next you're scratching your head in front of a console looking like a nitwit. How do you solve them? You search online, but it's way too soon after release for all the solutions to be posted. Well, besides from smearing Omnigel all over the console, I mean using a remnant encryption bypass, you have to just solve them yourself. Something that can take a long time, especially for the later ones in the game. The early ones with only a handful of glyphs and a lot of pre-filled spaces may make you cocky, but by your third vault, you'll be seeing five glyphs in a row crazy shapes other than neat squares, and only five or six pre-filled boxes. The key to solving them is to remember that there is only one correct answer, which can always be reached through logical deduction. What you want to do is count how many glyphs there are, which is usually about four or five, and then find a space with that number minus one exclusion. Now, what do I mean? Let's say there are four glyphs, and you want to find a space where three or four of the glyphs are not possible either because those glyphs already exist in the column or row or that space, or because they exist within that space's highlighted shape. Then put the only option there and repeat with the other spaces. Given enough patience, you can solve any puzzle that way. If our explanation was not very clear, and we're sorry, just hop online and look up guides to Sudoku puzzles. The solutions and strategies are very similar. Alternatively, you can just hoard remnant encryption bypasses. We won't tell. Now the game gives players enough information to get by, and certainly enough to satisfy most casual players. But if you care about the lore and minutia, the codex is really important. It dives into the details about a lot of the Mass Effect universe, focusing much more on what's new rather than exposition on what you already know. You can even read about your own adventures and character as it happens. It'll teach you a lot, some of which is even applicable in combat. For example, did you know that destroying the Remnant Destroyer's turret allows it to reroute power to its legs, increasing its speed? We didn't know that until we read the Codex entry. Now our final piece of advice, bring your thinking caps and keep them close at hand. Yes, for the puzzles, but mostly for all the decisions that you'll be making. In the mid to late game, you have to make a lot of decisions, occasionally on a time limit and without warning. These are the kind of decisions that really make you sit back and think. We can't count the number of times that we've had to lean back and say, okay, this is either going to be important later on in the game, or it might be imported to the next game. And we're not going to spoil it for you, but a couple of the missions really tested our moral decision making under time pressure. Remember, choosing to do nothing is still a choice. That's all we can say. Now it's not just with the main missions. Pretty regularly, SideQuest will present you with these conundrums. Though in these cases, probably without a time limit. There are very few right answers. Only a couple cases presented themselves where we made a choice and then found out that we were wrong, or had been tricked. When you hit these points, and when the game allows it, really sit back and consider the consequences of what you're about to do or not do. 
Nothing is worse than making a choice and then spending the next 5 minutes regretting it. But what's done is done, until you load an old save, and then it's not done. But we wouldn't sink so low, right? So that is it for a few things that we wish that we knew before we started playing Mass Effect Andromeda. Did this help you guys with any decisions on how you're going to play the game when you get it yourself? If you're already playing the game, what do you think about it so far? Let us know in the comments down below, and while you are there, give this video a like and hit that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video.